Apparently, I'm just really bad at this. Rossi Posse Packer Nation. Welcome to an episode of Podcast, the podcast where you don't have to do Pakistan, but it sure does help. I'm your host, Tom. No, seriously, I think this is the worst start I've ever had while doing predictions. Grassi. And today, we are going to be breaking down and predicting each game heading into week five of the 2024-2025 NFL season. And let me be honest with you, folks. I don't know what the hell is going on. Usually, the first couple weeks, it's like, all right, got to get used to it. But this legitimately, and I've been doing this for years, might be the worst start that I have ever had doing predictions. Last week, I had probably a career low of 6 and 10 of week four. What the heck is going on? The Minnesota Vikings are on top of the power rankings. They're undefeated, and it's just messing with everything. The forces of good cannot contain the forces of evil that are at work here. And yes, I am just talking about the Minnesota Vikings. And so now I'm sitting with a 33 and 31 record on the season. However, one person who is not having that problem is the person who is currently leading in the Pick'em League. And that is the Fizz 33 with a record of 46 and 18. A phenomenal start to you. And yeah. I just got to hope that with some bye weeks, less games, maybe I can lock in and we can bring back some honor and glory to these predictions. Or I just continue to suck. Starting off with Thursday night football, you got an NFC South showdown between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Atlanta Falcons. The Buccaneers rebounding after losing to the Broncos, not the Lions, sorry, I messed up in rankings yesterday. Rebounding in a big way, absolutely slapping the crap out of the Philadelphia Eagles. Getting Vita Vea back in that lineup was pivotal, and that defense was damn good at stopping anything Philadelphia wanted to do. How good? Well, in the first quarter, they had zero yards, so... Pretty darn good. Baker Mayfield continues to be efficient. Mike Evans is just so damn reliable. And the Buccaneers are really emerging as a very, very solid football team. And that is not an insult whatsoever. They just seem like a balanced team when healthy. And that their offense can score points and be efficient with the ball. And their defense, when healthy, can be really damn good. They're taking on the Atlanta Falcons, who didn't have an offensive touchdown against the Saints. However... Young Wei Koo hit a 58-yard game winner. You have saved us all. Oh. I just love Young Wei Koo, man. He's just the best. The Falcons, even though it was not a pretty game against the Saints, the Saints who had this explosive offense the first two weeks and it's kind of died down these past two weeks, the Falcons are doing enough to win games. It's not pretty. Kirk Cousins, there's definitely questions there, but they have enough talent on their roster that they're still contending for an NFC South title. And this game being played in Atlanta should be a good one for both teams because it's going to be a great test of both squads to see who is the front runner in the NFC South. Right now, for me, I think the balance lies with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The one deficiency I do see with the Buccaneers is their lack of run game, which the Falcons do not have that problem. However, I do think the Buccaneers should be able to contain whatever the Falcons are doing on offense. And on top of that, Baker Mayfield's playing pretty damn good football. So because of that, I'm going with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to get the win on Thursday night. And Baker just keeps on baking. Then we got our first game this season that is across the pond. I don't know what accent that was. You got the New Jersey Jets taking on the purple incarnation of Satan, the Minnesota Vikings. The Jets. Well, that was embarrassing. A rainy day at MetLife and losing to Bo Nix and the Denver Broncos. And the reason why I'm harping on that is because... Bo Nix had negative seven yards at halftime. Their offense never really did anything amazing. However, I got to compliment the Broncos defense because they played pretty damn well. And that secondary is looking real good this season. But between false starts, the offense not being able to get anything going, things are a little problematic with the New Jersey Jets. And who knows, maybe there'll be a Devontae Adams reunion soon, but not right now because they're taking on the undefeated purple incarnation of Satan, Minnesota Vikings. And Kevin O'Connell... He might be the early front runner for coach of the year. 
they go, God, we've never worked in a place like this before. You're hilarious. And you get the best out of us. Um, I think that pretty much sums it up. I hate it. I hate all the words that are coming out of my mouth. The Vikings had an incredibly impressive first half against the Packers in which they dominated on all facets of the game. Special teams, they were great. Or maybe just the Packers special teams was awful. They were running the ball well. Sam Darnold was super efficient. The defense was playing well and causing turnovers. And then the second half happened, which was oof. That one didn't go so well. While they were able to contain the Packers in the third quarter, the Packers wound up scoring 22 points in that final quarter, and they got really close to winning that football game. However, you got to give props to the Vikings, and even though they let up nearly 400 yards, Brian Flores' defense is looking pretty darn good. Sam Donald is playing out of his mind and really efficient, safe football. On top of that, you have Jordan Addison returning. TJ Hawkinson's going to return at some point, and this game might be a bit of a toss-up. You have Aaron Rodgers going up against the Vikings again, However, I don't know how much I trust that offensive line, especially when Brian Flores just blitzes all the time. And on top of that, Sam Darnold, if he's able to get the ball out quickly and to defeat his old team, the Jets, it could be a sweet Sam Darnold revenge game. So right now, I'm going to go purely off momentum. I would not be surprised if Aaron Rodgers pulled something out of his hat and wound up getting the win. However, I believe in the Vikings defense a little bit more. Even though they let up all those yards against the Packers, they should be able to contain the Jets offense. And because of that, Purple wins again. Following that, oh no, you got the Carolina Panthers taking on the Chicago Bears. The Panthers, the Andy Dalton revenge game was not to be as they fell to the Cincinnati Bengals who got their first win this past weekend. And the Panthers, you gotta say, at least their offense looks better than when it did with Bryce Young. And I'm sure Panthers fans heading into this game going against the Bears, they don't wanna hear anything about that Bryce Young trade. Patrick, I get the feeling that you think I really am dumb. They're taking on the Chicago Bears who defeated the LA Rams last week. Caleb Williams looks like he's playing a little bit better, maybe getting a little bit more comfortable. But one of their big successes besides their defense was that they ran the ball this week. And oh man, that's how you support a rookie QB. You look what the commanders are doing in DC, same idea. And the Bears being played at home, I think this could actually be a pretty close game. The Panthers, like I said, are definitely improved the past couple of weeks. However, going up against a very good Bears defense, which has proven to be pretty damn good throughout the first four weeks of the season, I think if Caleb Williams can get his feet from under him, DeAndre Swift can have a good game, this Bears team should be able to win against the Panthers. I know that's a pretty low bar. Sorry, Panthers fans. But I am going to go with Chicago to get the win here. I will laugh very, very hard if the Panthers wind up winning. But yeah, I got Caleb taking this one. Then you have an AFC North showdown between the Baltimore Ravens and the Cincinnati Bengals. And I think we can all agree. After seeing what the Ravens did to the Bills on Sunday night, Derrick Henry still reigns supreme. One, two, the Ravens had a near perfect game against the Buffalo Bills. Their defense was phenomenal, swarming to the ball. Josh Allen really couldn't get a rhythm going. Their run game was non-existent. And on the offensive side of the ball, the Ravens, yeah, Derrick Henry had nearly 200 yards. Lamar Jackson played efficient football. And again, I said this during power rankings, this is the kind of team that the Ravens want to be, that they can run the football really efficiently. Lamar Jackson is a dual threat, and the defense is the staple of that squad. And looking at this game, I think it's going to be pretty close because the Bengals, they did get their first win. We know that they could play up to their competition. They almost beat the Chiefs and with a win finally under their belt, maybe they got some momentum heading into this week. However, there are things I still don't trust about the Bengals. While Chase Brown looked electric on Sunday, I think they need to fully commit to him because he looks better than Zach Moss right now. On top of that, I still don't trust this Bengals defense whatsoever. And if Derrick Henry can get going, this could be a problem for a defensive line that hasn't proven itself yet this year. So because of that, I am going to go with the Baltimore Ravens to get the win against their division rivals. Kitty, I'm sorry, you might be going out this week. Then you have an AFC East showdown between the Miami Dolphins and the New England Patriots. Yikes. And let's just be real. Dolphins, for Mike McDaniel, that was another embarrassing performance for the offense without Tua. I missed him a lot today. 
and things are just not going well. I thought with Snoop Huntley that they might be able to get a little bit more going on the offensive side of the ball. Apparently, I was very, very wrong. Now, granted, they're going against a good Titans defense, or at least what's supposed to be. It just hasn't really shown up in the first three weeks. But they showed up on Monday night. They're going to be taking on the New England Patriots, who unfortunately, they just lost their center, who just went to IR. And the Patriots, they're not playing great football either. They went up against the 49ers. Jacoby Brissett got sacked six times, and now missing your center, I don't know if you even want to start Drake May anytime soon. And so this game is probably not going to be good. And it's really a toss-up of who is going to win. The Dolphins can't get anything going on offense whatsoever. They just look flat. And unfortunately, things got worse as today Jalen Phillips announced that he suffered a season-ending injury on Monday Night Football against the Titans. The Patriots, their defense is pretty good, but their offense is struggling. And I went back and forth here. However... And I'm probably going to regret this. I originally went with the Patriots because I was like, all right, they're playing a little bit better than the Dolphins. I'm actually going to go with the Dolphins here. Is the probably the last time I'm going to if it fails me. But Tyler Huntley, another week in the system. Maybe, maybe, maybe can make that offense move a little bit more efficiently. I think they should really lean on the run game. And if they're able to penetrate that Patriots defense, the Dolphins should be able to sneak away with a win. So I'm going with Miami here. Like I said, I'm probably going to regret it. But Dolphins fans, you just need some hope right now. Don't give me hope. Then you got a pretty peculiar game here. You got the Cleveland Browns taking on the Washington Commanders. The Browns, oof, losing to the Raiders last week. And listen, there were times where they could have definitely won that game. You had a holding call that called back a touchdown to Amari Cooper. You had receivers dropping it. And honestly, I think after all is said and done, Browns fans are just ready to move on past the Deshaun Watson era. Is there no way we can get rid of him? Not without cause, Michael. I have cause. It is because I hate him. Now, the good news for Cleveland is that Nick Chubb, Nick Chubb could potentially be returning very soon, and I love Nick Chubb. He's a phenomenal running back, one of the best, and I hope he comes back and he is at full strength because that will definitely give a lift to this offense. However, you do need to look at the person who is also throwing the football, and Deshaun Watson just isn't that guy right now. And so because of that, the offense, regardless of the weapons that they have, they are just struggling massively. So they can have this amazing defense, but if they're unable to get points it's going to make it pretty difficult to win football games. They're going to be taking on one of the hottest teams in football through the first month, and that is the Washington Commanders. And I'm just so happy that Wildflower is happy. Jaden Daniels and the Commanders have been playing pretty damn good football. You had the big win over the Bengals on Monday night a couple weeks ago. Then this week, they go in and absolutely blow the doors off of the Arizona Cardinals. They score 42 points. And I mentioned this during the Bears preview, that one of the things that they're doing really well is they're running the football. And we know that Washington doesn't have the greatest offensive line, but Jaden Daniels is operating in super efficiency mode. He's a hell of a player so far to come out of this draft class, and they are supporting their young rookie quarterback, and it's just been really, really fun to watch. I say this game is peculiar because the Browns, of course, have a very good defense. They're going up against this offense, and while people might call it simplistic, it's effective. So I'm just curious to see how the Browns defense is going to face off against Jaden Daniels and that offense, but Overall, I kind of can't go away from the momentum the Commanders have. It is being played at home, and this feels very good to say. I am sure that there are going to be a ton of people there in D.C. to support their team. Fans can be happy again, have some optimism. I hope that continues this week. And right now, I think the Commanders are just a very hot team with a ton of momentum, and they're going up against a Browns offense who just has not been electric all season. And so because of that, going with the Wildflowers to get the W, and yeah, Wildflower. Today is your day. No, today's Wednesday. Then you got an AFC South matchup between the Indianapolis Colts and the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Colts, Anthony Richardson, unfortunately suffering an injury early in that game, and Joe Flacco 
coming in to save the day, beating the Pittsburgh Steelers. We usually have a very good defense, and, you know, Joe Flacco just has some experience beating the Steelers. But the Colts seem like a team that are ready to kind of take that next jump. They just need a quarterback that is ready to do that. And that's not shaded Anthony Richardson. The fact that Richardson just hasn't started many games, you want to see him develop in that role. But Joe Flacco, a veteran, was able to come in with the weapons that they have and be efficient and move the ball pretty damn well. They're going up against the only win team in the NFL right now, and that is the Jacksonville Jaguars. And the Jaguars are really begging the scriptwriter for a win this week. Oh, come on! Oh. What a bunch of whiners. After getting shellacked by the Bills on prime time, this past week against the Strouds, they played much better, and there were many opportunities for the Jaguars to win that football game. C.J. Stroud led a really great game-winning drive at the very end, and unfortunately, the Jaguars were unable to win. Now, heading into this week, they need to do something. It is pretty much panic time with Jacksonville. They're starting at 0-4. They're the only winless team. They haven't won a game in all of 2024, and the only thing that I can give that is positive is that they were more competitive this past Sunday and this game is being played in Jacksonville. Indianapolis has a long, illustrious history of not being able to win in Jacksonville. And because of that, I know this is going to go against the grain, but similar to the Dolphins, now I'm picking them. I'm giving the Jaguars one more shot. I am going with the Jaguars to get the W. What I saw of them on Sunday, I was feeling a bit better about this Jacksonville team. So I'm going to give them the slight edge here because it is being played at home. Who knows if the fans are going to dress as clowns. But yeah, they need to not be clowning around and get a win here. And if not, heads are going to start to roll. Following that, you got what could be the game of the week. You got the Buffalo Bills taking on... The Houston Texans, otherwise known as the Strouds. The Bills, we talked about this before. Oh, they got their ass kicked by the Ravens. Their offense really unable to do anything, got away from the game plan. Then they started to get some momentum. They did that trick play, which resulted in a turnover, and things just did not look good. On top of that, Von Miller also suspended for four games, so he is going to be out for this game. And so looking at the Bills right now, not the best situation. However, I think they'll ultimately be okay. They're going to be taking on the Houston Texans, who had a big win over the Jaguars, as we just mentioned. Not a great game for the Texans, who are definitely missing Joe Mixon still. However, Stroud able to lead that game winner to a former Jaguar, by the way, and get that win. And looking at this game, the Bills Mafia versus the Strouds, no matter who wins, there is only one result. Anarchy. Anarchy! Now, as of recording this, Joe Mixon is currently questionable for this game, and I think that's going to make a big impact on who is going to win. Because on paper right now, I would actually side with the Bills, even though they just got beat by the Ravens. I still think they're a pretty damn solid football team. And for the Strouds, I think they're a good football team as well. However, the teams that they have beaten, I don't know if you've really proven a whole lot yet. They've beaten the Bears, who are okay. They've beaten the Colts, who are okay. They lost to the Vikings in a pretty terrible way, and they barely beat the Jaguars. And I know it's a divisional game, but the Jaguars are not a good football team right now. And so I think that the quality of the opponents that the Strouds have faced off against, I think that could be called into question. However, CJ Stroud is a hell of a quarterback. They get Joe Mixon back. I think that they are going to be cooking. All that being said, though, I am still going to go with Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills. I'm so sorry, Carr. I know the Strouds are going to blow you up. But just looking at this game, I got to think that this past Sunday against the Ravens was an outlier. And as I said before, just the quality of the opponents that the Strouds have taken on, I'm not doubting that they're a good team. But that is just a little bit in question right now. And you could honestly make the same argument about the Bills because who have they beaten? They knocked off a Cardinals team who are, they're pretty solid. The Dolphins, they kicked their ass and that was before Tua got injured. And then they destroyed the Jaguars. So then you start looking at quality of opponents and then strength of victory. I think the Bills' strength of victory is a bit more. Both teams have a blowout loss, the Texans against the Vikings and the Bills against the Ravens. And so this just comes down to who I think is going to be more prepared for this game. And even though Von Miller is going to be out. I'm going to go with Josh Allen, the Bills, utilizing that experience a little bit more. If they can establish a ground game with James Cook, I think they should be able to win. And so Buffalo, I'm rocking with you. Don't make me regret it. Also potentially buy me a new car.
Then, following that, you got an AFC West showdown between the Vegas Raiders and the Denver Broncos. Both these teams coming away with a big win. The Raiders taking care of business without Max Crosby, without Devontae Adams, and defeating the Cleveland Browns and Deshaun Watson. And for the Raiders, again, their offense is the thing that is questionable here. Who knows if Gardner Minshew is going to be in there or AOC is going to get some time. Their defense, however, has been the staple of this team so far, and that was kind of expected coming into this year. Now, of course, there is this little hiccup that Devontae Adams may have been dropping some hints that he's not so happy with Vegas. Inattentive, impatient, a glazed look in the eyes. Look carefully at the I really wish I weren't here right now button. And by dropping hints, I mean he wants to get traded. But speaking of good defenses, looking at the Denver Broncos, they were able to beat Aaron Rodgers, and their offense looks not good. Bo Nix had negative seven yards heading into the second half, and they were still able to get the W. Their secondary is playing really good football right now, and even though it was a sloppy game at MetLife, you got to give credit to the Broncos here. They were able to beat the Buccaneers, now they're able to beat the Jets, and maybe that defense is going to let them win some more games. Now, to be very honest with you, this is probably going to be a very low-scoring game, and I'm not looking forward to it. Both offenses are struggling to say the least and this should be a defensive battle and it's gonna be a matter of which defense is going to be able to get the edge max crosby looks like he is going to be returning this week which i think could do wonders for that d-line and getting after bo Nix. and the raiders also have owned the broncos for the past long time so originally i was going to go with perna and give the broncos a victory because it is being played at home however I'm going to let history and a returning Max Crosby give the Raiders an edge here for me in predictions. I think the Raiders do pull off the win, continue their dominance over the Broncos. However, don't be surprised if this is an absolutely hard game. Following that, you got the Arizona Cardinals taking on the San Francisco 49ers in an NFC West showdown. The Cardinals... Oh, Cardinals, I had high hopes for you. Such high hopes. Maybe you could be the underdog. Maybe you could be the dark horse. And you got your ass kicked by the Washington Commanders. And I'm looking at it this way. I still don't think the Cardinals are an awful football team. I still think they have plenty of talent on that roster. However, there are definite gaps, and they definitely need to get more talent there, which I'm sure they'll address in the draft. Their defense leaves a lot to be desired. And when James Conner is not on, that game could get out of hand pretty quickly. Meanwhile, they're going to be taking on the San Francisco 49ers who are just still waiting for Christian McCaffrey. Well, what are you waiting for? I don't know. Something amazing, I guess. <sighs> Me too, kid. Get well soon, CMC. But the 49ers able to pull off an ugly win against the Patriots last week and nothing really looked super duper impressive but the 49ers who are injured right now were still able to pull off the win and this week going up against a division rival this should be a pretty interesting game the Cardinals have a lot to prove here to see hey can they kind of reclaim their season a little bit a little bit has gotten away from them and it'll be interesting to see how Kyler Murray is going to match up against this 49ers defense however talking about the defense before of the Cardinals I think the 49ers have enough weapons to take advantage of that secondary. I think the Patriots defense is much better than the Cardinals. So the 49ers should be able to put up more points. So because of that, I'm going with the 49ers to get the home win. And Cardinals, I hope things get better soon. Then you got the Green Bay mother loving Packers taking on the LA Rams. The Packers, they lost while the rest of the NFC North won. Very cool. Just great. The Packers had an abysmal first half against the Minnesota Vikings in which they couldn't get anything to work. Defense was playing poorly. Jordan Love was not playing well. We were missing kicks, and it looked like it was going to be a very long day. However, they had a big fourth quarter rally able to come back against the Vikings, but unfortunately, it was not enough to bring home the W. Jordan Love, obviously still injured. We have to worry about kicking issues, and there are also guys like Christian Watson who are dealing with a high ankle sprain. Devontae Wyatt was knocked around in that game, but hopefully you're going to see the return of Jair Alexander, who they desperately missed this past week. They're going to be taking on the Rams, who lost to the freaking fracking Bears last week. Come on, Rams! You had one job. The Rams, I know, are beat to hell right now. They have a ton of people who are injured, including some of their top playmakers. However, it was really coaching that kind of let them down. McVay just making some weird decisions against the Chicago Bears, who have a very good defense, mind you, but 
a kind of unsettling loss for the Rams. Now, this should be a pretty damn good game at SoFi. Matthew Stafford going up against the Packers once again. And the one thing I will say about the Packers, even though that first half was pretty damn bad, their defense has really been capitalizing on turnovers. Xavier McKinney had his fourth interception in four weeks, which is just phenomenal. I hope the streak continues here. And while they haven't really been able to get after the quarterback a ton, they have been opportunistic with their turnovers. And so if the Packers can play mistake-free football and Josh Jacobs can get running, I do believe the Packers should win this football game. The Rams are a good football team, but considering how many injuries they have, I do think the Packers are just a better team here, though I do imagine it'll be a close game because Stafford's going to do Stafford things. So because of that, I'm going with the Packers to get a much needed win and hopefully getting them back on track. Then you got the New Jersey Giants taking on the Seattle Seahawks. The Giants, they're playing on Thursday night football against the Dallas Cowboys. And listen, They got some talent on that offense, but they need to figure it out. What we need to do now is get focused and stop pointing fingers. You're a problem. You're a real, real problem. The Giants have no run game whatsoever. They are a very one-dimensional team, and when your one dimension is Daniel Jones, results are going to vary. Their defensive line is very solid. Their secondary is definitely missing guys like Xavier McKinney because they got Tyler Newbin back there right now, who is a rookie. It's going to be a bit until he can get acclimated. But they did keep it close against the Cowboys, which I think is a mark against the Cowboys rather than a plus for the Giants. But that's neither here nor there. They're going to be taking on the Seattle Seahawks, and the Seahawks impressed the hell out of me. They came into the past week undefeated, not a lot of people talking about them, and with all of their injuries on the D-line, their offensive line just being horrible, they were still able to put up a good amount of points. Geno Smith played really damn well. He threw the ball over 50 times. Kenneth Walker, an absolute monster. And you got to think as Seattle gets healthier, they're going to get better as the year goes on. Taking on the Giants here, I just don't think the Giants are going to be able to do a whole lot. Again, they don't really have a run game. Meanwhile, the Seahawks, they have one of the best running backs right now when Kenneth Walker is healthy. Geno Smith can play really well even behind a depleted offensive line. And so even if they're going to be pressured, like Aiden Hutchinson was a monster this past Monday, I do think that the Seahawks are going to be able to score some points on this Giants defense. So because of that, I'm going with Seattle to get the big win and they can continue their dominance over the NFC West. Then you got the Sunday night football matchup, which... This is a tough one to predict. You got the Dallas Cowboys taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Both these teams trying to return to their glory days and get back to the Super Bowl. Time travel. What? I I see this as an absolute win. The Cowboys keeping it close with the Giants, as we just mentioned, and not a really uh, pretty game whatsoever, but they were able to squeak away a win. And looking at the Cowboys right now, they have a ton of talent on their team. It just seems like things are not going well. And while Dak, I think, had a really efficient night on Thursday night, this team needs to be more than just Dak Prescott and C.D. Lamb. The run game leaves much to be desired. That defense is not as good as I thought it was going to be. And so, yeah, there are some concerns concerns with the Cowboys. They're going to be taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers who suffered their first loss against Joe Flacco and the Colts this past Sunday. And for the first time, it was really the defense that let the Steelers down this season. They were allowing Joe Flacco to carve him up. And while Justin Fields had over 300 yards, and again, looks like he's progressing pretty damn well with this Steelers offense. It definitely is disappointing that the highlight of that team just really didn't get it done on Sunday against a beatable Colts team. Now they're going to be taking on the Cowboys who I think have a little bit more of an electric offense than the Colts. And it's going to be really interesting to see how the defense is going to respond here. One thing I will say, though, is the fact that this is being played on primetime in Pittsburgh, I'm actually going to give the advantage to the Steelers. I imagine their defense is going to show up, and if they can get after Dak Prescott and pressure him, they can win this football game. Justin Fields needs to play an efficient game of football and not have any turnovers, and they need to have a strong run game. As we have seen, you can run on the Cowboys, and if they can establish the run and Justin Fields doesn't turn it over, I think the Steelers are going to win this game. And I know Steelers fans are really upset about this because every time I pick the Steelers, they lose, but I'm sorry. I'm going with the Pittsburgh Steelers to get the win here. If they lose, the curse continues. And yeah, I don't know what to do anymore. Then finally, on Monday Night Football, not a doubleheader, you got the New Orleans Saints taking on the Kansas City Chiefs. The Saints, 
Yeah, their fans just want to keep on talking about that Cowboys game. Back then, I was in my prime. Vince, that was two weeks ago. Yep. Time sure flies, don't it? Losing to a game-winning field goal from Young Wei Koo against the Atlanta Falcons. And while their defense did their job, it was their offense once again that couldn't measure up. And that is just the consistent problem with the Saints. We've said this over the past few seasons. We're starting to talk about it this season, that their defense is definitely good. Their offense, though, either they're really, really on, like the first two weeks, or they're just very mediocre. And while they would love to get a Devontae Adams, they are not going to have him this week. They're going to be going up against the reigning defending Super Bowl champs, the Kansas City Chiefs, and it's in Arrowhead, which gives the Chiefs a huge advantage. Now, unfortunately for the Chiefs, they have injuries all over the place. Isaiah Pacheco out, Rasheed Rice out. And if they're going to win this game, you're probably going to see a ton of production from Travis Kelsey, who was their leading receiver this past Sunday. I know he's been quiet this season, but I imagine that's going to change this week. Now, this is going to be an interesting game to see how the Chiefs offense, who has not been great over these past four weeks, how they're going to match up against this Saints defense. I think that's the most interesting aspect of this matchup this week. And the Saints offense, that's where I'm having trouble picking the Saints here because the Chiefs defense has just been playing great football. They were able to beat the Chargers and shut them out for three of the four quarters last week. And I think that they're going to be able to have some success against this Saints offense. So because of that and the atmosphere, I'm going with the Chiefs to continue their undefeated streak and getting the win here. And hey, maybe Derek Carr will be reunited with Devontae Adams soon. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. How do you think these games are going to shake out? God, I just hope I have a better week than I did last week. But let me know. You know, I saw me at TomGrossyComedy.com or TomGrossyComedy, all social media you see down below. A big shout and thank you to all the patrons and YouTube members for supporting this channel. And thank you so much for watching. I'm Tom Grassy. And as always, Go Pack Go! (laughs) 